Hey everyone, welcome back to Teacher FYI. If you're new here, I'm Mackenzie, a fifth grade teacher in Northern California, teaching remotely this whole year. As 2020 comes to an end, finally, I wanted to make this video to look back on my favorite apps and websites that have helped me manage my classroom more effectively during a year that has relied more on technology than we have ever experienced. So whether you are teaching virtually, hybrid, or fully face-to-face -face in the classroom, I'm going to be sharing seven apps and websites that I hope you find helpful. If you do find this content helpful, please give this video a thumbs up to support this channel and to help other teachers discover this content. And do consider subscribing to my channel so you can stay up to date with all my latest tips. So let's get started. The first online tool and probably my most used app this year while teaching has been Jamboard. So Jamboard is a free Google Suite app that works as an interactive whiteboard where you can draw, add text, add images, and even add sticky notes, which are pretty much the closest you'll get to post-its on an anchor chart. You can also enable editing access and share the link with your students so they can actually join in and collaborate on the same Jamboard with the whole class. There are really so many ways you can use Jamboard. I did make a video where I share six ways that I've been using it with my students. So if you do wanna check that video out, I'll link it down in the description box. But to give you an overview, I love using it as morning check-in questions, as exit tickets. It works great as a collaborative discussion board for your class. Jamboard really is such a helpful tool and my most used app this year. The second online tool that I have found super useful in 2020 has been Nearpod. So I don't know about you, but I feel like I am constantly making slideshows this year for my online lessons. And so Nearpod just makes those lessons more interactive and engaging for your students while teaching. You can make one from the Nearpod website or you can get the Google Slide add-on and take any slideshow that you have been working on in Google Slides and then add in those Nearpod interactive elements. I love using that Google Slide add-on feature because now I can just use any of my lessons that I have made in Google Slides and then add in poll features or matching activities, fill in the blanks, check for understanding response question, a sticky note collaborative board. There are really so many different tools that you can add into your slideshow. So once you add in all the different interactive elements you want in your lesson, then you can open that up in the Nearpod website and then you share the link with your students. Now they can do this by themselves or you can do it together as a class. So I prefer to use Nearpod during my online Zoom sessions with my class. So I share the link with them and then as they log in, their names start popping up and I can see all of my students in live time interacting with the slideshow. As a teacher, I keep the pace of the lesson so that I'm actually teaching my students in live time while they're answering all of those interactive elements. So as we're going through the lesson, if they are asked to draw something or respond to something, all of their answers are going to pop up all together and I can immediately see how they're doing on that lesson and see if they're being engaged. And this has been really helpful this year because I know as the year has gone on, more and more of my students don't keep their cameras on and I still wanna make sure they're engaged on that Zoom call. And Nearpod is so helpful with that because I know that they're still engaged because they're participating in all of those questions during that live lesson. The third online tool that I have been using this year is Flipgrid. So Flipgrid can be so much fun. It is a video discussion platform to use with your students. You're able to create your own class on Flipgrid. So it works really great with Google Classroom if that's something that you've used. And once that's created, then you're able to post assignments and discussion posts that your students need to respond to. Students then record short video responses to that question or to that discussion. And the rest of the class is able to view those responses and they can respond with a text comment or add their own video response. I do feel like it has helped give my students more of a voice this year and to get to know one another. And my students have had a lot of fun with it because they can add effects and add little emojis to their video. So there's also little editing features that make it really engaging for them. It really is a great way for students to actually be able to listen to their classmates and respond to them when they do have time outside of our Zoom calls. There are so many great ways to use Flipgrid. If you go onto the Flipgrid website, there are so many ideas already out there. So some ways that I've been using it this year include having my students do book reviews. So they'll go onto Flipgrid, make a one minute video about one of their favorite books that they've read and why they're recommending it to their classmates. And their classmates are actually able to respond if they are excited to read that book too, or if they have questions for them. I also really like it for STEM challenges where students can actually make a short video to share the STEM challenge that they have created. Also at the end of novel studies, I usually give student choice of different types of projects that they can make. And so having Flipgrid as 
as one option. If students have really enjoyed it more of a video platform to show their learning, then that's always one of the choices too. Now, if you haven't used Flipgrid before, I do recommend that the first one you make is really low stress. I just had my students all hop on and ask their class a question so that they could practice just using the different features and then their classmates had to respond to at least five other classmates with a text comment answering their question. Now that they're more comfortable with it, it's something that they're really enjoying to use this year. The fourth tool that I have just started using this year and have found super helpful is Whiteboard Fi. So Whiteboard Fi is a website and it is another interactive whiteboard. But what I love about this is you share a link with your students and then you're able to see all of your students' whiteboards. So when you go to the website, you're going to click new class and then you'll type in your name that you want your students to see and then you'll get a room code. So you can just share the URL with your students and then they're able to join your class and then you'll see their names start popping up and all their little whiteboards will start showing up. So I've mainly been using this for small group math. So if I click toggle my whiteboard, then I'm able to share my screen with my students and they can actually see what I'm doing for that part of the lesson of me writing on the interactive whiteboard. I can insert images if I have something I wanna show them for a lesson, or if I have a story problem that we're walking through together, I can put that on my whiteboard. But you can also share your whiteboard with the rest of the class. So once I write a story problem, I will then send that to all of the rest of my students' whiteboards, and then they have that word problem on all of their whiteboards. So now they're able to see the word problem on their whiteboard and then they can work it out. I really love that I can see multiple student strategies and then if there's one student's work who I really want to share with the rest of the class, then I can just push their whiteboard to the rest of the class and it will pop up on their screen. You really can use this for any subject. I have found it super helpful for small group math and just being able to see their work has made me so happy. My fifth favorite online tool of 2020 has to be Epic Books. If you aren't familiar with Epic, it is an online digital library that gives your students access to hundreds of books, especially with so many students learning from home and not having those weekly trips to the library. They can still have access to so many great books. They're able to search by level or by topic and subjects. What I really find helpful is you're able to actually create your class, you can share your class code, and then you can actually see all the books that your students are reading on Epic. You can see how long they spend on each book, which really helps when I'm seeing their reading habits and what types of books that they enjoy. You can assign books to your students. You can create collections to share with your class that goes along with what you're learning in class. It gives you more access to books you can use as read-alouds. So on a Zoom call, I can just share my screen with my students and read them a book that way. I know last year when I was doing reading centers for second grade, this came in handy because on Epic, they can actually listen to some of the stories too. It really just has so much to offer. I also have some really exciting ways that I plan on using using it later this year with virtual book clubs because now students have access to the same books as each other. Epic is definitely one of my favorite websites this year. It's also an app if your students use iPads, so definitely check it out if you haven't already. The sixth online tool that I have found super helpful this year more than ever is Class Dojo. I love Class Dojo for so many reasons. If you aren't very familiar with it, it is a parent communication app. You can award students points and your students can also have portfolios. One of the main reasons I love Class Dojo has to be because of parent communication and the fact that it translates in multiple languages. I've just found that I get more parent involvement using this app because families feel more comfortable speaking in their first language. You can easily send links or PDF handouts, which have been really helpful when sending out my newsletters and scheduling events and reminders. I really like using Class Story where I can post pictures from the class. Of course, that just means a lot of screenshots from our Zoom calls, but even on those special dress up days, I'll take screenshots of us in Zoom and it's just a way for them to feel more connected with each other. I also have set up student portfolios, so that's something new I'm trying out this year. And I've been using it purely for challenges, so like drawing challenges or STEM challenges. I'll do some type of weekly photo challenge for my students, and they just send in their photos to their student portfolios. And then I make a little slideshow that I shared a class story on Fridays. Using Class Dojo this year has just helped build that community and that connection between me, the students, and their families. The seventh online tool that I have been using is a classic and that is Kahoot. Kahoot is an online website that makes your learning into a fun game for your students. You make a series of multiple choice questions for your students and then you share a code with them and you play the game with each other as a class. 
Kahoot has really become a weekly tradition in my classroom this year for Fun Friday, where I create a game that reviews what we've learned that entire week into about a 10 question quiz. They're just so easy to create and it's a fun way to summarize their learning from the week. I'll usually add in a lot of funny little gifs with each questions that my students really look forward to seeing. This is something that my students look forward to every Friday, so it's definitely one of my top seven for 2020. So that's my top seven for 2020. Thank you so much for watching. Those really are my most used and favorite apps and websites that I have been using while teaching online this year. I would love to know what has been working well for you this year, so please let me know down in the comments. If you did find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, and I will catch you next time. Bye, everyone.